All right, last thing we're going to talk about in the unit circle is a 60 degree reference angle. So we've already talked about our quadrant angles, our 30 degree reference angle, and our 45 degree reference angle. So let's look at 60. Uh, just like before, uh, if we have a 60 degree reference angle, our actual angle in quadrant one will be identical to that. We'll go ahead and convert this. Six will come itself once, 18 three times, so we get pi thirds. All right, uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, see if we can't come up with our triangle and figure out the sine and cosine. So here we go. Uh, it's 30, 60, 90, so this side's going to be the square root of 3. This side will be 1, and this side will be 2. So what that gives for us, cosine comes first, so it's going to be 1 half, and then the sine, square root of 3 over 2. And if you have that, then obviously you can find the tangent from your triangle, or you can do tangent as sine over cosine to get your tangent value. Uh, we can also have a 60 degree reference angle in our second quadrant. So if that's the case, it would look something like this. Our actual angle is how far we would rotate. So we would rotate 120 degrees. Sides of a 30, 60, 90 is still going to be the same, still square root of 3. This is going to be 1. We'll say it's negative. So what we can do is come up with our ordered pair. Uh, it's going to be our cosine first, so negative 1 half, and then square root of 3 over 2. Remember the x is negative in your uh, nice little second quadrant, so our cosine's negative or our sine's positive. And then we need to figure out what our radian measure. So to come up with our radian, so there's a couple ways to do it. One way is you can say we're 60 degrees short of being 180, and that's of course how we get the uh, 120. Well, 60 degrees is pi thirds. So if this is 3 thirds, because it's a whole, and you take away 1 third, then you will be at 2 pi thirds. Another way to think about it is if you take 60 degrees and you double it, you get this. If you double 1 third, you get 2 thirds. So a couple easy ways to figure that out. Then let's move along to figuring out what it would be in the next quadrant. All right. Okay, uh, we could also have a 60 degree reference angle in our third quadrant. Our actual angle, we would rotate from here to basically here. So we are basically 60 degrees past uh, 180, so that would be 240 degrees. Whoops, forgot our zero. 240 degrees. Uh, we are also one-third past one hole, so that's going to be four pi thirds. Our triangle looks a little something like this. Remember, no matter which quadrant you're in, your hypotenuse is always going to be positive. So positive 2. So this will be negative square root of 3 and negative 1, since we are in the nice little third quadrant. So we'll get negative 1 half as our cosine, and our sine negative square root of 3 over 2. Looking in the next quadrant, uh, we could also have a 60 degree angle in the next quadrant. And we're going to draw a nice little triangle. Uh, when we do that, we would get this to be negative square root of 3, and 1, and 2. And then what we actually need to figure out is our actual angle. So let's see if we can't come up with that. So our actual angle, we would rotate from here to here, basically. We're, we're 60 degrees short of being a full circle, so that's going to be 300 degrees. And then in radians, we're basically one-third short of being a uh, 2 pi. So 2 pi in terms of thirds would be 6 pi thirds. So one short of that would be 5 pi thirds. And then, uh, as you can see, based on our triangle, we can go ahead and uh, list that. So it's going to be 1 half. Remember, the x is positive. And then our sine value is going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. And that's it for our 60-degree reference angle.